nights entertainment. I only have one question. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? It's Boys to Nerds, the nerdiest podcast that you are listening to right now. I swear by my pretty floor bonnet, I will end you. Featuring the producer, Steve. Steve, do you have those ready to go? Of course I do. The unanimous human sacrifice for a cult ritual, Mark. How scared are you right now? On a scale of one to scared. On a scale of one to ten, I'm going to put you in the face. Ten. The godfather of pain, Gerald. Hey, Gerald, pronounce the actor who played Killer Croc. Go. Uh, Akino Anui Agbaje. The man to Kevin's left, Brian. If anybody is listening, please save me from the show. Oh, and your host, the master of hot takes, the flip flapper, the cantankerous badger of the north, the old coconut donut himself, Kevin Lewis. Well, we are back, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for tuning in to Voice Nerds, a two times a month podcast where we talk about everything nerdy. Excited to be here. Uh, as always, we have a full cast today. Last time, we were not able to. Nobody's fault, of course. I'm not looking at anybody specifically, Gerald. Uh, Did you guys record without me? <laughs> yeah, so we couldn't wait. But and it, I thought the show took a hit. I thought we were missing something. Just an, you, an infamous knowledge of crap. <laughs> I asked a lot of questions and people didn't have answers, but didn't want to say welcome to the show. We're back, of course, to entertain you on this Wednesday. Uh I, we have a special guest today. Uh, of course, we have Brian, Gerald, Steve, and that other guy, Mark. But I, I hey, figured... how's it going? Let's get some more nerdy knowledge in here. Somebody that I know for a fact is a huge nerd. So I, I asked my friend Chris to join us today. Chris, why don't you say hello to everybody listening at home? Hello, everyone at home. Now, I do want to ask you, obviously, we've showcased our expert skills. Uh, Gerald's never lost a game. I have opinions. <laughs> Brian is here against as well. But what makes you... A qualified nerd. Tell me a little bit about your backstory. Not like a whole novel of stuff, but tell me what your interests you, what you specialize in, and what you bring to the table. Well, it all starts in the summer of 1994. Oh, good year. Good year. (laughs) No, um, just a lifetime of comics and video games and all kinds of fun, nerdy stuff. I will say that Chris probably puts me to shame when it comes to nerd levels, uh, and that's a good thing in today's day and age. Maybe not so much in the 80s, but today... We own the place. So how's everybody doing today? Open it up. Open up the floor to conversations and speeches. I'm just going to start with hashtag Brian was right again. <laughs> oh, boy. Just saying. Uh, are you talking about Suicide Squad? I don't want to, but I'm just saying <laughs> that I was right. So well, that's all I got. Well, we'll let everybody decide what they think about Suicide Squad. But How many of us have actually seen it so far? I have. I'm raising my hand. I have seen it. Yeah. I'm going right after the show. All right, so half of us in this room. Yeah, so uh, I know a lot of people weren't probably rushing out to see this one, and I don't want to get too much on it because we are going to do a it super actually, follow. I'm going to stop you right there <gasps> because it actually broke um, the Thursday night record for um, August. I'm in people in the immediate group here. Like yeah, when I was asking yeah. people about it, they were like, yeah, I might see it. I was there Thursday. Uh, I, I waited Same. till Friday to see it, but we'll, we'll, we'll hit on that a little bit more. I think you have it in your news, right? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But we'll, we'll go we'll go in depth with a solid review. And spoiler alert: I'm not telling you if I liked it or if I hated it, but you might be surprised at how I felt. So we'll leave it at that. Gerald, why are you looking at me like that? Why are you looking at me like you want to talk about uh, your your Wednesday morning? <laughs> I don't. So just don't talk to me. <laughs> Has anybody like done anything fun lately? Like, have you gone out and bought anything? I went to Fye recently. I know I just opened up a question and immediately took the thunder yeah, and answered a lot. it. I had an answer. But I went to Fye recently. Those still exist, and I was perusing sure. through things. They had some solid Dragon Ball Z stuff, and I think everybody knows huge Dragon Ball Z fan here. Have you guys ever been to Fye before? Like. Recently, not in like ten years. Yeah, <laughs> I re- maybe ten years ago no, when they had, when they had the arcade at Eastview. Uh, yes. Oh my god, I, so good! I really wish they would bring those back. I but did for- send the misses there for a pop vinyl, which I know we're talking about later. Yeah, um, because they have some exclusives still, even though they don't really exist. That's what I was looking for was an exclusive <laughs> one, and I found it in Hot Topic. <laughs> when was the last time you went to Hot Topic? That's the real Never. question. <laughs> Brian, you said you were up to something recently. Yeah, last night, um, fiance and I were down at Sea Breeze. Catching Pokemon. Oh, here we go again. Oh, let's just do crushing it. Crushing it. Trying to get that level up. I'm at 91 right now, seen and caught. Is that out of 100? Oh, 91 Pokemon. No, it's Pokemon. 142 that are available in the United States. So I'm, I'm working my way up there, but now it's kind of like getting to a grind, and I really need Niantic to pick up 
their game and start doing some updates real quick. I can't, I can't believe that. Didn't they say system. that they were going to put yeah, this on PC now? Isn't that a thing? I don't know what they're doing. Honestly, every decision, we'll get more into it in the news because I have a story about them, but honestly, I don't know what they're doing. They really need to start doing things quickly because they're losing a lot of interest. I can't believe that this is still a thing. <laughs> I well, don't... we talked about it two weeks ago when we recorded, and I had said give it four to five weeks and half the people that are playing the game won't be playing it anymore, and I think we're almost there right now, including oh, yeah. myself. So is that, I don't want to transition, but I'm kind of bored to death with Pokemon, and I was at Game Craze, which I'm sure all of you guys have heard of, and the one that I went to was freaking awesome. They had like a specific room for every old console that were in there, and I decided to purchase myself a GameCube. Ooh. Don't know why, <laughs> but I am now... That the... was probably the worst decision that you've made <laughs> in a long time. I am, I am now the proud owner of a GameCube, Luigi's and I'll Mansion? tell you why I that bought That was it. the Wii U of that generation. Let, let me tell you why. I, <laughs> I disagree. I disagree. It, it is. I, it I, is the Wii U of I that will, generation. No, it is, but that's not a bad thing. I don't, it was Nintendo not, again. <laughs> I don't think exactly. it it's given the credit it deserves. It didn't do well and it didn't sell well, but all I'm saying it is... It made some great games, I can but... now play Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. <laughs> the pure reason why yeah, I bought that. that. You can do that on your Wii U. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't own a Wii U, so what's you cheaper? You bought that. What's cheaper, a Wii U or a $40 GameCube? Might yeah, as well NX wait. NX is coming out in yeah, like you might as well six wait. months. I don't, I don't know what NX is. Uh, <laughs> nobody does, but it's awesome. Exactly. <laughs> you can't wait for it. <laughs> Have you watched any movies or anything recently? I, I've been digging through the vault as well. I know we're kind of just talking about uh, newer movies recently, but they're all still those classics. I collect a bunch of them. Have you um, perused through the old, uh, you know, DVD uh, cases? I was watching the uh, Outlaw of Josie Wales this morning. Yeah, nobody's Classic. ever heard of that. <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> Seriously, Mark, I don't know why. Mark talks about all these movies these made guys. in the 1800s. <laughs> it was like 1975. <laughs> yeah, th- oh, around there. <laughs> when, I was at, when I was at Target, I know you're a huge Jaws fan. You know how they tend to bust out those collector movies of like one, two, three movies all in one? Well, yeah. they had a collector set for five bucks and it was all the Jaws movies but I thought it, was, it probably wasn't Jaws 1 I thought though. it was too good to be true yeah. so I inspected a little bit closely two, three, and, four. and it was 2, 3, and 4 <laughs> and I was like this is too expensive Jaws 4 <laughs> starring Michael Caine <laughs> the best one <laughs> alright Brian why don't we why don't we why don't we get into the news alright it's time for the news with Brian in his blue hat his blue shirt glasses headphones t-shirt coffee cup I think Orange straw. He's not even wearing a hat. Yes, he is. <laughs> Who are you going to believe? Am I wearing a hat? We'll never know. <laughs> Story number one. Uh, Variety reports Suicide Squad uh, had a massive $20.5 million opening on Thursday night. Uh, quoting Variety, setting a record for August release and making it the 13th biggest preview showing ever. Yeah, $25.5 million. That's whatever. It's a little bit of pocket change. You know, uh, a little bit of a hit, though. I believe it's not coming out in South of South America due to a um, deal going wrong with Warner Brothers. And also the film is not expected to open in China. They're going to lose so which much money. Which will <laughs> really cut their... Um, I feel- that's ability to make money back. Also, the movie is complete garbage. So, um, <laughs> well, we know Brian's opinions. <laughs> uh, it's currently sitting at twenty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which is less than Dawn of Justice. I don't and think it's a forty one on Metacritic, but I'm sure that's tanking as more people are saying. I think it's a solid seven something on IMDb. But I remember when Dawn of Justice came out, it was like a nine point four, and then it started to dip a little yeah, bit. Exactly. So I'm sure yeah. we'll, I'm sure we'll see. That. Are we going to see a big percentage drop in? Uh, next well, week? once people find out, this is one yeah. of the most like terribly written, edited, and like extremely sexist movies they've ever seen yeah it's just gonna completely tank it's just awful anyways uh speaking on batman uh batman a telltale series episode one realm of shadows was released this week by the way if you have access to a playstation 4 an xbox or a pc that has gaming play this game like it is so good it splits your time between batman and bruce wayne and there's it it really leans heavily into the detective nature of Batman and you start solving crimes actually it's it's insane it's I was, really great. I was watching a playthrough on YouTube where people played it for me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was bored to death I don't know how people um, play those is garbage it similar, games is it similar to the, the Telltale, telltale yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's the same yeah it's very uh, a Telltale style obviously art style uh, the it's fact a, that you're a, choosing how to act in certain it's a freaking scenarios. cinematic scene where you hit a button every 10 minutes in order to interact. It's cool. Talk about boring. 
It's like, and a, if you want to be bored to death, I'll be streaming it next week. <laughs> there, there, there we go. It's 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 really great. Um, anybody other than Kevin that has a brain should play it because it's great. But you're at least admitting that I have a brain. Yeah, <laughs> begrudgingly. Uh, the teaser trailer for Christopher Nolan's World War II epic Dunkirk was released. That had a Suicide Squad, so finally he's back and not doing something that I, I don't s- understand, like Interstellar. I saw that, and I just gotta say, that's how you do a trailer. I mean, I saw mm. it. And it was just troops in a boat in a boat. With something hovering over them and them squatting, and then it's done. They didn't show the entire gosh darn movie in yeah. the trailer. Seeing and that trailer in IMAX was just unbelievable. That is a, that is just a lost <laughs> art form these days. Like I, they yeah, just he knows what he's doing. So uh, number four from Kotaku, uh, they're talking about Niantic and, Pope- and Pokemon Go uh, yeah. making a statement uh, <laughs> shutting down Pokemon tracking sites like PokeVision. Um, so, quoting Kotaku, Niantic uh, blogged about one of the more controversial topics surrounding Pokemon Go, tracking websites. The rumor for a long uh, while had been the tracking websites such as PokeVision put too much strain on Niantic's servers. And then quoting Niantic themselves, these seemingly innocuous sites and apps actually hurt our ability to deliver the game to new and existing players. So, essentially what was happening is that the nearby feature in Pokemon Go showing you where... You can find certain Pokemon by, like, the one, two, or three footprints and kind of where you can go in the world to actually find them was not working for, like, two weeks. So these sites like PokeVision were telling you exactly where you could find these Pokemon. So uh, Niantic had those all shut down, and they still have not fixed the feature on the app. So a lot of of users are stopping to play it because they can't find where any of these Pokemon are, so it's just really losing their user base. I like how people are getting really excited for the Gen 1 Pokemon, and they're like, oh my god, a Kangaskhan! And Kangaskhan's, like, not even that good of a Pokemon, but, like... They can't even get Kangaskhan here. Let's, but, l- l- Mega Kangaskhan is, like, one of the top uh, Pokemon in... Uh, Mega is completely different. I'm talking about just straight but it brought up back Gen, to Kangaskhan. Gen 1. <laughs> yep, and... Right now, it's uh, location locked to uh, New Zealand and Australia, so Is it? good luck. I thought that's how the game was initially down. supposed to be done, to where you can only get, I don't know, like 30 Pokemon yeah, in each country or something. There are only four that are, are located. Did you hear about the guy, the the first guy in America, quote-unquote, catch them all? Like, they are literally, like, flying him yep. out to country after country, like, all expensive paid, just so he can be the first person in the world to actually catch them all. It just right. shows you how hip and trendy everybody is these days. Like, there are always going to be those people that take something to the extreme, no yep. matter what it is. Like, if a video game comes out, like, Fallout 4 uh, comes out, I'm sure, like, the next day there were people that were, like, a le- level 100, and it's, like... Jesus, people. Can you imagine this guy, though? Like, he is making money and getting services to travel the entire world for catching Pokemon. Yep. What, like, could you imagine that dream. a year it's ago? A what if they, dream. This is kind of messed up, but what if they put an extremely rare Pokemon in an ISIS camp? Would you risk it? <laughs> no. Wow. I could take it. All right. <laughs> Last story. Well, we, found Mewtwo. we finally found Mewtwo. <laughs> I'll take ISIS down. <laughs> uh, Eurogamer uh, reported had some specs for the new NX console. So basically what they're describing is that it's going to be a portable uh, system that has detachable controllers. So you can play all these games on the go, and then when you're home, you plug it into a docking station, and you'll be able to play it on your TV. Is, so. it, is this the thing that's Nintendo and this supposed is, to re- yeah, this replace is like their the next, Wii U? Yes, okay. this is their next uh, console installment. It's not going to be as powerful as the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, but it clearly, with it being a portable console, they're basically yeah. saying they're not going to try to fight They're claiming it's going to be a, th- a no third pillar kind of idea where they're still going to support the other two which we all know is bs but <laughs> it's rumored to be more powerful than the ps3 but slightly less powerful than the ps4 right. so they're in essence they're not they're not saying that they're trying to compete they're, they're trying not. to create a a new I mean, idea or new concept they can't, for the console. They, they can't experience they're, they're trying to do like with pokemon go and with matomo they're obviously trying to appeal to a larger audience with uh, on the go players uh, for mobile, and then they're just trying to make another handheld console that you can also play at home. Which, if it works, it's going to be a good idea, but it's just going to be difficult to see if the graphics compare to while you're on the go to when you're at home, and also the battery power, and also yeah. what's this price going to be at? Because if I can get a PlayStation Four for three ninety nine, I'm not going to buy a, an X yeah. for four hundred dollars. But also uh, with both sides of the company coming together to make games, there's no longer that long drought of games for a Nintendo system because they will. 
all be making it the same. Yeah. They've already said that there's within six months we'll get Mario and Pokemon on that system, oh, which a, is huge for that system. Talk about an entire franchise just leaning on like two entities: <laughs> Zelda, yeah, Mario, and Pokemon. Yeah. That's how it was at the Wii U launch and every other Nintendo console. How launch. is Nintendo still a thing? <laughs> no, one day, <laughs> one day, like Disney or someone will buy them, and then that'll be it. I think it would be cool though to have another new Mario game that's like similar to the old Super Mario Worlds, where it's not some sort of weird adaptation or. Uh, what was the other one that came out back in uh, Mario, for the SNES? Um, it was a it was like Mario a, Brothers. No, it was a, like an RP3 game or not RP3 RPG RPG game Super Mario RPG. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Like doing <laughs> something. Why we to brought that. him on board, everybody? <laughs> 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 Nerd. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean I think making a game, throwing it back like that as a Mario, rather than just, all right, here's another, you know, Super Mario card or some weird adaptation of Mario would be cool. Yeah. Or they just do, like, a mature Mario game. Or Ooh. Just, oh, just he's like got a gun people. now. <laughs> I, I, I really think they Down should... Down and out plus. I really believe that they should you pull <laughs> what <laughs> Capcom did years ago with Mega Man 9 and 10 and just come out and say, here's Super Mario Brothers 4. Yep. And release it as a 2D side I'm just scroller. waiting for them to redo Duck, Duck Hunter. That's all I want. Just Duck Hunter with, like, insane <laughs> graphics. That's all, that's all we, we all want. It's called the Wii. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well. That's it for the news. All right, well, the good news is we've been trying to do these podcasts, you know, a little more often to give you some more exposure. But obviously, we want new people to listen to us, and not everybody's been on board since day one. So as you know, or as you may not know, Boys and Nerds is made up of five main core members that have been here since day one. We've lost a few along the way. They're dead now. Uh, so I did want to spend a little bit of time each episode kind of going uh, through each cast member and learning a little bit about them so you can connect and you know, know what makes us tick on the inside. And today, uh, we're going to focus on one of my favorite cast members. Uh, equally tied for, I don't know, first, second, third, or fourth. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> but, Gerald. Oh, me? Y- you are the man of the hour, the unstoppable force himself that none of us have been able to be in any it's form true. of competition. It's very true. So, uh, we have our wonderful interviewer, Brian, interviewee. Yeah, interviewer and interviewee, Gerald. So, yep, I'm going to turn it over to the man of the hour and the man to the hour's left. <laughs> All right, Gerald. Um, well, again, we're just trying to get more in depth into each of us and just kind of let you know where we're all coming from and, and why we're all here. So, Gerald, I'm going to start with that. Uh, when Kevin asked you to join Voice Nerds, uh, what what compelled you to say yes and, and join this? Other than the fact that I wouldn't take no for an answer <laughs> <laughs> physically. <laughs> uh, a couple things. Um, first, I like uh, talking about this kind of stuff, and I like being around you guys and talking about that stuff. Um, you know, it's always fun to be able to relate to other people who are uh, into the same type of things. I have a lot of friends that uh, aren't really into this kind of stuff, so it's nice to be able to talk to people that are. Um, second reason, probably the biggest reason for me is um, it's kind of an experiment for myself. Um, not a lot of people know this about me, but I suffer from severe social anxiety. Um, so coming out and talking on a podcast like this is great for myself. It's something I never would have thought I'd, I'd be doing. So uh, for me, it's just a, a, a big step forward. He does a great job eating yeah. sardines and everything. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, a madman. <laughs> I remember that day like it was yesterday. Well, it was uh, six months you, ago. Do you... Um, <laughs> Do you think it's helped in that in that sense? Like, are you talking to more people about stuff like this, or is it is it has this podcast trans like affected your life outside of here? Um, a little bit. I mean, we're not very good at our job, so I understand yeah. that the answer is no. But <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not I'm not great at making conversation. It stems from a, a life of not talking for a, a long time. Um, but uh, you know, I think it helps. So you know. Just this little bit of exposure talking with you guys. It's nice to do something out of my comfort zone. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So you have a you have a longtime girlfriend, Lindsay. She was here. She uh, competed in girlfriend uh, trivia. Made it to the finals. I no, she, yeah. actually, did she? Wait, no, but she was close. Yeah, she was. Close. She made it to the semifinals. She did. Um, is she into any of these nerdy things, or do you guys kind of when you're together stay away from all that and you just you're still into it? 
Um, she, when we first met, she was never really into any of this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, she likes Disney movies and stuff like that. I mean, that kind of has its own, like, nerdy following. It but... does. She has good taste. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, she's never really into that, but she's very supportive of it. You know, she goes and sees all these comic book movies with me, and, you know, I think she's learned nice. to enjoy them, and I've gotten to her into, her into a lot of good TV, um... Like Breaking Bad, she'd never seen that before. And best. Game of Thrones, um, and now she loves that kind of stuff. So nice. it's nice to be able to share that. So with her. slowly but surely, yeah. you're planting those Inception seeds. It's good. <laughs> uh, now we work together. Um, almost everyone in this room works together, and uh, your day job is a video producer. Mm-hmm. Um, is that something that you've wanted to be involved with, like video production? Is that what you went to school for, or is it something? Um, that you just kind of fell into and, and you enjoy doing? And if not, um, we're not going to tell anybody at work, but, like, <laughs> is there something that you do want to be doing that isn't producing? Or, or do you want to take it one step further and maybe eventually make the jump to, like, California, New York, and, and do this as a as a more serious gig? Um, I enjoy what I'm doing right now, um, being a video producer. Uh, I have always had an interest in production and movies and TV. I didn't go to school for it. Um, I kind of lucked into being able to do it, but um, I, I did take some classes in the in the stuff, but I don't know a ton about it. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'm learning more and more all the time, and I do enjoy doing it. Um, I don't know if I'd ever go out to California and do it in that sense. Mm-hmm. I do enjoy... Uh, creating things, coming up with ideas, stuff like that. Um, so maybe, who knows, maybe one day. Sure. Well, like you said, so maybe you didn't fall into it, uh, you weren't pursuing it in school, but mm-hmm. is there is there any advice you would give to any of our listeners that do want to pursue it or any advice that you would give, um, you know, kids in, in school that are like, oh, well, that's really interesting to me or to be part of that world because not a lot of people know, but like producers – they're not the ones like actually shooting or cutting mm-hmm. it, but they're the one making it all happen. So. Yeah, um, yeah, I could say a, a lot of things that people normally say, like work hard, follow your dreams, <laughs> stuff like that. But I'm just gonna say this: keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. What's that from, like SpongeBob? Yeah, <laughs> I think he made that up. <laughs> all right, last question: If you and Lindsay got married tomorrow, oh boy, <laughs> where would you two go for your honeymoon? Would it be to catch Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Corleone, Sicily. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, um, I would like to go to Sicily, really. Um, but uh, uh, we've, done, we've done the tropical thing, so definitely something where we get out to go and do some more exciting stuff. Um, so maybe like Europe, Sicily would be yeah. good. Chernobyl. Just do like a tour. <laughs> He said Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Just do like a tour every. Do you have family in Italy? Uh, I do have some family in Italy. Um, I've never met them. My sister has met them before, though. But uh, yeah, that would be cool to go out there and see them. Yeah, I do that. I, I I have a similar situation. So one day we're gonna get out there. So. Well, thank you so much, as always, gentlemen, for performing that wonderful interview. Uh, solid answers. Learned some things about Gerald I didn't know, and uh, we're gonna keep this going. Uh, the next few weeks. I think maybe we'll do Mark next week. I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> we don't want to lose a following. So. Uh, thank you so much. But speaking of Mark, uh, I know that you're a movie guy, and you have an extensive knowledge, which I do tease you about a lot. Uh, you have an extensive well, knowledge bit. of movies to the point where I really do appreciate it, to the point where I'm just like, geez, how can one person know that much about older films and all that kind of stuff. You make so, me cry at night. <laughs> <laughs> so I do want to kind of want to turn it over to you, and we're going to introduce a new segment, so that way we can kind of help our audience kind of grow their knowledge of the movie world slash, what is it called? Bollywood? Hollywood? Bollywood. Bollywood. Bolly Hollywood. <laughs> Jai Ho. <laughs> Some Dog Millionaire. That was a hint song in 2008. Nine. <laughs> it won the uh, best... Uh, Nobody cares, Mark. It won the best original <laughs> song Oscar that year. It won the best film. <laughs> it did. Best director, all those awards. All right, uh, this is a uh, short segment. Uh, this, when I'm going to talk about a film, or if we do this every other week or whatever, these are films that either were popular or not popular, or fell under the rug, or people have just forgotten about for whatever God knows reason. Number one, the Mummy. <laughs> Number two, the Mummy Two. <laughs> those weren't bad movies. I know they're amazing. Well. 
Brian Hansen, I don't get it. That's they're easily not, they're not the worst. They don't ever. hold up. Easily one of my favorite action adventure movies. The of Mummy all time. scared me so bad and scarred me as a child. Oh, I'll just leave it at like, that. Like physically or emotionally? A little of both. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the Mummy, Michael Clayton. That's the movie I'm going to be talking Ooh. about this week. They don't relate at all. Anyway, uh, Michael Clayton. Speaking of the Godfather, <laughs> Johnny Depp. <laughs> he, he did play Whitey Bulger. Yeah, I was just going to say, he just did Black Man. Well, you know what? You, know, you guys had to pick me apart. You couldn't just let me have it. <laughs> no, typical, have it. typical reaction. All right, Michael Clayton. Michael Clayton was a film that was uh, released nine, ten years ago. Uh, nope, nine years ago. Tony Gilroy directed it. George Clooney, Tilda, Tilda Swinton, Tom Wilkinson, the late great Sidney Pollack. That was one of his last last movies as an actor. He was also a director. He did Tootsie and all that. Mm-hmm. This movie is about a uh, former prosecutor played by George Clooney. He works at a fixer at a law firm. So if you need to get rid of evidence or you know, convince a client to go this way or that way. So he's that guy from Pulp Fiction at the end. Yeah, he's a yeah. wolf. <laughs> the wolf. He's, he's a wolf, pretty much. And then one of the uh, biggest attorneys at the firm, Tom Wilkinson, walks away. He has a breakdown during a huge lawsuit, and we don't really know how it's going to go out. And the, one of the reasons I like this movie is that even though it is slow, it, it's supposed to be that way. It is a slow burner, and it grabs you all throughout. And I don't think it got... The recognition it deserved. I mean, it, Tilda Swinton did get her first Oscar for that movie, mm-hmm. and that was a large upset. Nobody was expecting her to uh, win that award with all the other nominees out that that year. But she, everybody turned in a great performance. So that's one of my favorite Tom Wilkinson movies. Yep. And George Clooney, he's done stuff before, but I don't think to this level. Uh, Siri, Siriana, I think, came the year before or after. Uh, and he won the Oscar for that movie. And this is, if you like, uh, not necessarily, um, if you like sort of like old school law thrillers, like lawyers and, you know, just slow burners, I, I highly recommend this movie. You won't regret it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that. I have never seen it. I remember seeing advertisements for it like about 10 years ago. and I haven't, It really is thrilling. I don't really honest. go yeah. out of my way to see a lot of uh, George Clooney movies, uh, but I know a lot of film buffs like some of the movies. Have you ever seen the movie uh, The American? Yes. came out a few years ago. Another example of a movie that George Clooney was in that people didn't really like or see, but it gets high Most price. underrated George Clooney movie? Batman Obviously, <laughs> Obviously, Batman and Robin. <laughs> the, one that no, defined his, the one that defined his career <laughs> in a good way. For better or worse. Where he showed up for 20 minutes and was like, whatever. Could uh, you be the only Batman to have nipples? <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. You can pull off bat nipples successfully. They have I them. I didn't say he could have. have I said, them can you be the only they Batman They are to totally nipples? present in Batman Forever, but nobody ever mentions that once. <laughs> so I don't know. Being pulled off is a real uh, loose term there for Batman Forever. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to transition to you. Chris, I want to get you involved. I want to talk about something that I know that I've seen on your social medias, that I've seen on your T-shirts. You're a collector, aren't you? I can tell. You like to collect things. I think you're a big Captain America fan, too. Is that correct? I am. I don't get it. There's another person that's a big Captain America fan in the room, too. Best Marvel hero. uh, And you probably like... I like this guy. Do you like to Flash, too? Flash is okay. Uh, Okay. Now now he's talking sense. (laughs) But uh, something that's come out, and this isn't a new topic by any means, but something that's kind of taken over the last, I'd say, what, one to two years? No. Maybe no. a okay. little bit longer. Maybe yeah. a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. But the, the the pop vinyl, the Funko brand of all these little cute little caricatures with the big heads. Uh, you know, you go into your Barnes & Nobles. You go into your one FYE that's in the 700-mile radius. Hot top. <laughs> now into your Walgreens, <laughs> your, wa- your Targets, just, your Walmarts. Oh, just Walgreens everywhere. Hot Topics. And you see these things on the shelves. And I remember... A year ago, I was seeing these things. I was like, these are freaking stupid. I will never be caught dead <laughs> collecting these stupid things. Flash forward <laughs> nine months. I now own 20 of them. <laughs> yeah, the reason we're doing this topic is because Kevin just started getting into it. I know. <laughs> welcome to the party. Yeah. I'm really excited. I'm like going to specific stores to like hunt these down. <laughs> this but, is secretly an, an intervention. But why don't... Why, who collects these bad boys? I know... Do you, Chris? I do. Do you, Brian? I've been on board since the very first <laughs> wave. And I don't want to be that guy, but I am that guy. <laughs> Does anybody else collect these? things or is it you think were you me nine months ago where you just think it's freaking stupid yeah i, I think it's pretty stupid they're the bobblehead things right mm, but just have bigger they're heads. not necessarily bobbleheads. they're like some anime are, looking are. bobblehead some of them things. are bobbleheads. hey Sorry. hey let's not uh, say uh, the word anime in a negative connotation here i'm not saying <laughs> i'm just saying that they're anime looking bobbleheads yeah i agree they're very 
there, what you described to me once, what is it, to where they're less detailed in order to kind of conform to shelving, right? Yeah, that's, cartoony. to me, that is the appeal of it. So I can have uh, Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean stand next to Captain America, standing next to uh, the Hulkbuster, and they all look uniform, it's, and they all look like they fit together. Yeah. And that is the appeal, is that I can have... You collect the Dragon Ball Zs. There's Game mm-hmm. of Thrones, Walking Dead. Literally, any almost anything you can think of has representation in these lines. What was the first license that they had that they really like when they first the started first releasing them? The first I ever was introduced to them was the DC line, and yeah. that was oh, Batman, yeah. Joker, Riddler, Penguin, um, and Robin. And those are one of my most prized possessions. Is the Riddler wave. one the first wave <laughs> yeah. one? Because it's what is this really called for on to... eBay now? Do you uh, have Riddler idea? can definitely get up there. Um, I. Definitely think it crosses the over a hundred dollars. Is it like old school more. Riddler from like the '60s show, or is it? He's uh, got the bowler hat and um, yeah, the pur- purple yeah, mask. the purple mask. I've seen some from the first couple waves go as high as four or five hundred. It's crazy to me. Yeah. Crazy. So the only, yeah, the only one I don't have from the first wave that I'm missing and that is really expensive is, is Penguin. I went to go. Uh, I realized they did rock and roll ones, mm-hmm. and uh, don't they, tell me you got Kiss. No, no, no. <laughs> they did a Jimi Hendrix one. My dad's a big Jimi Hendrix fan, yep. so I was going to get it for him. And then I went online and saw it went for three hundred. Yep. And I was like, yeah, oh, I'll get him something else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. no, yeah, they're nice to get. I yeah, mean, they they are good gifts. I've gotten some for gifts for people. I yeah. got one. Brian got me one for my birthday, and it was awesome. Mm-hmm. I got a Batman one. So yeah. I mean, there are good gifts, uh, and I just have it chilling at work for now. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like you have Batman next to almost all of your uh, DBZ figures, it's and like, my Green Power Ranger. Yeah, and the Green Power Ranger. <laughs> but that, I mean, again. That's the the uniformity is so cool that you can have all of these so, different people. Still waiting on my Mega Man ones. Speaking to come. of Green Power Ranger, I'm transitioning a little bit. I went to Target last night and they just released like this really highly detailed like six, seven, eight, nine inch figure of the Green Power Ranger. And if you collect them all, you can build the friggin' Megazord, and they're all twenty bucks a piece. <laughs> nice. And I'm gonna be very poor <laughs> very soon because I freaking <laughs> want those. I don't care if people are like, "Well, you're playing with dolls. You're a thirty year old man." <laughs> I don't care. But so, back to Funko. Yeah. So you've been, you said you've been on board. What do you think your, or what's your favorite one? And then what is the one that you think is worth the most or hardest to find, most exclusive? Um, hardest to find is, that's hard to say. With. Didn't you say the White Power Ranger one goes for quite a pretty penny? Yeah. So what they do is after they've been out for a while, they vault them. Uh, yeah. Like what Disney did with their <laughs> movies. So they go away, they stop producing them. Um, and people then wonder, they just sit on eBay. People and, wonder why I freaking anyways. hate Disney. See, I I collect sets. So mm-hmm. the big one I collect is Star Wars. Um, and a lot of the early Star Wars ones are impossible. Yep. Um, I pretty much stopped trying at this point. Um, my favorite ones, honestly, probably my Planet of the Apes ones. Nice. Um, they have so many licenses now. It's yeah. Like I mean, crazy. you could just name anything. and they It's... They have so many great licenses and stuff that you don't really find that often. Like yeah. ha- getting the DBZ ones was awesome yeah. because <laughs> they never make it. <laughs> good DBZ stuff. Exactly. I, um, I'm only missing a few of the big ones, and the one's actually really easy to find. I just haven't gotten it, is the Vegeta with a scouter. But there's a Golden Frieza one I want that's like fifty bucks on Amazon. Yep. There's a Super Saiyan God Goku that I want that's like fifty bucks, and there's black haired Goku. That's I got. 50 bucks. I got most of those as they so, were coming out, so I was able to find them. I, sorry to interrupt you, but um. I do like that the company now releases blind boxes every month for different um, different themes. I get mm-hmm. the Star Wars one. There's a DC one. There's a Marvel one. There's all types of different ones. So it's a great way to get kind of really cool exclusive ones. Is that Absolutely. What? I subscribe to the That's Star Wars. It's called Smuggler's Bounty. And yep. this week was or this month was Jabba's Palace, which oh, is fantastic. perfect because I have a big Jabba mug right now, and it's amazing. I was but looking at the Boba Fett one they did two months ago. The Boba ago. Fett pop is probably amazing. my favorite pop. Because he's, ever done. it's got yeah. basically the base is not the typical base. All the Star Wars ones come with black bases. They say Star Wars. Yeah. The Boba Fett one is him rocketing out of presumably like the Sarlacc pit mm-hmm. or something, and the base is flames. And it's like yeah. all very detailed, and he's flying. So what they started doing is now they're not just all in one pose. Like they're starting to get action poses, especially with the Star Wars and the lightsabers. But one mm-hmm. thing that will. Like, I will say that drives me nuts about Funko is that they, every day, they release like a new line of things. So mm-hmm. they have like. Christmas lights now that are yep. pops. They have um, pens, mugs, water bottles, T-shirts. Uh, they have dorbs, which are kind of 
tiny versions of the Funkos. Um, they have stuffed animals. They have all this stuff. And it's like, I can't collect all of it. And it's not that I want to. It's just like some of them look really good. They're mm-hmm. releasing all of these new ones, yeah. like you said, at an amazing. It's really taken off at this point. But is it a flash in the pan? Uh, two, three years from now, are these going to be the beanie babies of this generation? Or do you think it's going to have some moderate success to where they're going to be keep busting them out for years I to come? I think as long as they secure licenses, they'll keep doing it because movies will keep coming out and they always release a line with every new movie that comes out. And I don't think this is like beanie babies. Well, I mean, it essentially is just because of the popularity, but it does appeal to everyone, but it's not taking on as much as a widespread phenomenon as it appeals to everyone. It's more of like the nerdy culture, and you can have all of your favorite characters in, in one place. And if one is hard to find, like the original Han Solo, they'll release mm-hmm. 11 more Han Solos, yeah. and you can still get one. So it's not like there's this. Oh, there's only one royal blue elephant, and you can only get it. Like <laughs> it's They all, make it easy for you. It's also, I mean, they might stop making like certain sets like, I'm sure five years from now you won't get a Golden Girl set like we're getting right now, <laughs> are and we like really? things like yeah we are it's fantastic <laughs> and stuff like that. But they're, they're they will all always corpses. make the <laughs> they will always make the Marvel, the DC, yeah. the, like the, the super nerdy yeah. ones because we will always be there to buy them. Exactly, and they'll always sell. I hope there is a Master Roshi in the next Dragon Ball Z one. Yeah. I'm like holding my breath for it, and I'm sure I really there want will it. be. I'm sure anything in any fandom that you can think of, because once there's the Star Wars line is almost at like over 200 now. There's every variation of every figure. Yeah. I hope they come up with a Schindler's List line soon. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I will definitely buy that. There's a really... Uh, I don't want to go down this route. I apologize in advance, but there's like a really collector's one of like... Never mind. I'm not going to say I, it. I want a Captain I'm Nazi. Not say, it was going to get really dark really fast. We've already made some questionable comments this show. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to pass. And you know if my filter caught it, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you guys collect them too. Let us know what your guys' favorite ones that you guys have. Do you guys have any rare ones? Are you guys willing to sell me any of the ones I said that I need for cheaper than $50? Because I'm not spending $50 on something that costs 50 cents to produce. <laughs> but... um yeah, I, I I keep collecting them. I keep getting more. I rushed out to get Dragon Ball Z Wave 2 the day it came out because I wanted them, and I almost didn't find the one that I wanted, and it was the kid Goku on the cloud, and the guy's like, this guy walked by, and he looked in my car, a worker, and he's like, oh, man, you're collecting these? He's like, I know where they are in the back. Want me to hook you up? And I'm like, yeah, of course, son. Come back here with me. <laughs> yeah, this is a really weird scenario you're describing, Kevin. Pro tip for you. <laughs> Uh, GameStop and some other stores that are starting to bring them into their stores mm-hmm. are doing pre-orders on them now. Nice. So when you know there's a set coming out, you can always... And you don't have to sure. pay for the GameStop ones beforehand. You can just reserve it, and they will go, and they will save it for you. So, yes. But to finish my story, he brought me out the kid Goku, and he's like, is this the misprint? Because it said Goku flying Nimbus, and Nimbus was spelled wrong on it, and I guess that those ones are supposedly supposedly supposed to be rare. So I just have it chilling at home, like in a box, being like, I hope it goes up to three, four hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. We were like talking about those earlier, so it's just can't chilling. wait to turn this. <laughs> so it's just sitting there, and I have a feeling with my luck, it's going to end up being worth. That's like- my question for this. For somebody who doesn't really collect them, do you guys? open them up or do you keep them in the box i tend to open them up i don't care except for yeah this i don't one care about the one. box i'm not gonna sell them i i only display like two in my house the rest i just have in a box just because i've been collecting them for years so there's a ton mm-hmm. yeah so i they're literally just in a box so i only put out like really cool ones so i got luke and and han from the ceremony at the end of new uh, hope so yeah, yeah. i got those the other week so good <laughs> yeah that's my problem with them is like where do you keep them all if you yeah get you, you gotta be them. selective with what you get well i hate to bring this up but <laughs> summer's almost over guys i know that's so weird just <laughs> out of nowhere but i am a uh I'm a, breeze, I'm a summer fan and we live in a, we live in an area where it's gonna be cold bruce springsteen cold that's uh billy joel don't sing bruce springsteen on my show again even though it wasn't <laughs> yeah. even if it can be implied that it was bruce springsteen that's bad but anyway we're gonna grease it's gonna be uh getting really cold lately and we're gonna be busting out <laughs> busting out see how much power i have here we're gonna be busting about fall tv soon so that's one thing i did want to kind of focus on now what is coming out that everyone's going to want to check out uh what do you guys personally watch yourselves the 
Flash. And that's it. Best show on television. <laughs> <laughs> the Flash is really good. I really enjoy it. Thank I, you, Gerald. I've been meaning to watch it, but I just... Yeah, and you should because it's the best show on television. I'm going to watch Better Call Saul. I don't think that's fall, but I'm going to spend some <laughs> yeah, time Mark on doesn't that. know when that came <laughs> <laughs> they, they Mark's fought. also interested in Game of Thrones. I'm going to watch <laughs> Free, I'm gonna watch Freaks and Geeks. <laughs> exactly. It's this new show. I hope they pick it up for a second season. <laughs> no, but Flash is coming out for season three. And for anybody that is a fan of comic books, the storyline they're running with, and this isn't spoilers because it's what the first episode is called, is Flashpoint. Can't wait. And it's going to be phenomenal. The first two seasons have been some of the best written comic book storylines I've ever seen played out. They are better than the Marvel movies. They are better than the DC movies. And it's just everything you could want from a superhero property on television. Well, that's, that whole universe has taken off. We were kind of talking about it earlier, Chris, to where yeah. you know they're they're kind of commingling now with Arrow, Supergirl, yeah. and it's just going to get yep. more and more in depth. Legends of Tomorrow. They have four mm-hmm. main shows running, and they've been releasing set photos uh, the past couple weeks. Of Superman is joining yep. the Supergirl show, so we're gonna we might even have a full fledged Justice League. And with Flashpoint again, for anybody that knows, we could have Batman. We better have if Batman. If we get a Thomas Wayne Batman, I'm, gonna I, I'm be literally the going to start yelling. Yeah. I'm just going to scream for like an hour. Because that was one of my favorite storylines. So I watched, good. I watched the animated movie they made a few years ago recently. It was really good. The Flashpoint one. Oh, yeah. I yeah. saw that. That was good. It yep. was on Netflix. Yeah. So highly recommend it if you haven't seen it and Absolutely. or have not read the book. But yeah, so that, that whole expanded universe is good. I remember seeing Superman that they cast and I was like. This guy doesn't look he, like Superman. He, he looks, looks like weird. A, yeah. He looks like a pretty boy. But then they look like a put like a side and side comparison with him and like a, a sketch of one of the Superman. So I was like, shit. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I thought looks I had like the, the most recent Earth Two Superman suit. Yeah. yeah, seems like that's what they're going with. Right. Still no just, red underwear though. I know. Well, I well, like that. Good. That's phased yeah. out. Yeah. I yeah. always hated Superman with the yellow S on the cape too, which they did in the Christopher Reeve and uh, right, right, what's right. the Richard Donner? That, was, that guy. Yep. Those movies. Yep. I always hated that. So. Walking Dead, though, I mean, I don't care about your stupid Flash show. Let's talk about the real show here. Yeah, Let's baby. talk about The Walking Dead. And I, I used to do a Walking Dead podcast. I know everything <laughs> there is to know about The Walking Dead, except for what's happened in the most recent comics, because I'm a little behind. So what do you, but, Kevin, I know you've been pretty vocal about, um, about Negan. What do you think, uh, do you think it's going to make it better for you? Because I know you weren't a big fan of Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dean Morgan's scene as Negan in the oh. finale. Do you think it's going to get better? Do you think it's going to get oh, worse? It's definitely going to get better. I'm not going to just kill a guy for literally having an eight-minute monologue. You know what I mean? That's the only sample size I've seen. Sure. That's like, but to be fair, I could have said the same thing about the girl who plays Andrea in the first season. Yeah. <laughs> and be like, let's give her a chance. And then she turns out to be the worst character ever on the show. <laughs> but no, I, I'm just not a Jeffrey Dean Morgan fan. I don't think he's as uh, he doesn't have enough passion. He's not exciting, and this it kind of puts you in a position of a reader now because mm-hmm. I am coming up with what the character sounds like in my head. They haven't done him before, so I picture Negan being like really high pitched, really high energy, that kind of stuff. Not not a Jeffrey Dean Morgan who talks with no energy like this. You know what I mean? So that's what threw me off. I'll be the first person to tell you that. One, I've said it a million times. I thought John Hamm would have been great for that role. Sure, if they had gotten him, I would. Freaking fleep out. Fleep out? Fleep out. I'm fleep out. Fleeping out, guys. I would fleep out. <laughs> See, I felt like no matter That's what racist. they did on AMC, Wait, is it? <laughs> Gerald? they could have never done that <laughs> right. <laughs> Negan's character is just so so harsh and yeah. hardcore that they could have never done it right unless they moved the show to HBO. I feel like, exactly. He swears all the time. He literally does really disgusting and disturbing right. things. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's what I kind of like about him because I know you guys are going to all jump on my uh, jump on me right now, but he kind of does have that joker to where he can, he's joking around all the time, but he can turn serious real quick. Now, for you, know you guys, what I mean? Which will scare you when you start <laughs> reading the most recent Walking Dead because I just read the most recent issue last I, night. The, la- the last one I think I read was the one where I don't want to give spoilers, but um, they're obviously tr- moved to the people that wear the skin on their mm-hmm. face. So that's kind of oh, just to give you an idea. That's where I am. <laughs> what Silence gonna, of the Lambs. What were you going to say? No, I was going to say, so you guys read it. Um, I know what we were talking a little bit earlier. So the governor is very different in the comics than it was in the show. Way better in the show. And yeah, like you were saying, do you think that they're going to try to keep it more on tone with the comic book Negan or do you no. think they're going to do their own they thing? They can't. They, they, they literally no can't. way. I think they're allowed one. He swears constantly. Like every other word is a swear word. He's like a typical 21 yeah. year old out on the town, you know, drinking uh, liqueur, being like, F this, F that, F this, F that. You know, in, uh, in other AMC shows, like they, they like Breaking Bad and, um, Mad Men, I think they kind of like 
blank out the swear words mm-hmm. sometimes. But they still can. They only have a limited amount that they can do. I swear. Right. I used and, to the Talking mm-hmm. Dead. I've watched like for years, and like they've mentioned that before. And you wouldn't be able to understand them if they did that. Can they yeah. make it up with <laughs> other words, or do you think that they're trying to avoid it? No, he will swear. He'll definitely swear. I bet you if he, he swears, they'll say like S bombs and stuff. Well, he had a few. He, you know, he said the the P word. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> What's like the he P had a pineapple. Few. Oh yeah. <laughs> so well, he's had some, but it's nowhere near like it was. The tone will be different. That's why they're making. Yeah. They're going to make him a little more serious character, but they're still going to have that craziness to him right. to where he like. I, have you seen the finale? Has everyone seen the finale? Yeah. Yes. So am I going to spoil it for anybody? He pretty much eeny meeny miny mows people to where he's going to the beat somebody cast. to death with a baseball bat with barbed wire. So you can kind of see how and he's doing it as he's doing them a favor. He's mm-hmm. going to be like I don't want to do this but I have to. Not somebody. and Daryl. I, I heard that they filmed it every single way, so if anybody was... So no one knows. Looking, yeah. Until so they, I, I disagree. I think it's going to be Glenn. So. No, I think it has to be Daryl. I think it's the only they, person they can kill. You that really think they're going to kill Daryl? He will die at some point. Oh, definitely. Oh, they'll definitely. kill Daryl at some point. Well, I don't have, think they're going to lead it off. I think they lead Darryl. it off with... Because you have to hate Negan. Like, yeah. So yeah, much, Glenn and Glenn is, doesn't hold that kind but of. Glenn, but Maggie does. But Glenn though. is also kind of a soon-to-be father. So yeah. now you're taking Maggie out a has father, this but, emo- like her sister, her mother, her father, and now Glenn. Like if they do that, she's going to be. And they're setting devastated. they're setting Maggie up to be a leader type role right. that she was training with the lady. Which I think I think this is going to be the linchpin. I don't. I do think that Daryl is going to go sooner rather than later. But there's no way. I, I bet you both of them are dead see, by the end of the next. My season. thing is, is they when they did Glenn in the comic spoilers. Um, <laughs> you know, if you don't want us to tell you everything that happened. sorry, it was 50 <laughs> issues ago. Um, Get over when it. When they did that, he was like the most popular <laughs> character in the comics, and everybody freaked out. It was similar to how people feel about Daryl, just on a smaller scale, because we're comic fans. Yeah. That's why I feel like it's going to happen because they really want you to go into the next season and hate his guts. Wouldn't it be funny if they actually did uh, uh, the guy with the what the hell is his name? The, the guy with the mustache. And oh, the, uh, Abraham. Abraham, who nobody likes. And hey. They're like, oh, well, I guess he's dead. How about Abraham? How about right. if they did Maggie in, instead? No, they're not. Oh. They're, they're not going like to kill. They're not going to yeah. kill a pregnant woman. There are certain things that are off. Know, didn't women. Game of Thrones do that? I don't know. I'm not, <laughs> I haven't caught up. Yet. They didn't do it with a governor when it came to. Are, uh, they killed the baby there first. Certain, in that one. There are are certain things that are off limits in television they would never do yeah. that no. i agree i i think it's going to be glenn as well yeah so walking dead i'm super pumped about what i am excited though is because we've now been trans i don't want to spend two the entire thing on the walking dead but the the last few seasons i've thought of have been kind of dull at moments i thought the second half of last season was, was a lot better than the first half but i thought the first half of season six was freaking terrible um, but mm-hmm. they're transitioning back to that whole society thing. So I'm excited now that they finally have an opponent again because when they had that opponent in uh, season three... Governor was, seasons are the best. It was the mm-hmm. best thing they've done, in my opinion. So I'm, I'm ecstatic. I do not think I'm going to be thrilled with Negan. I think I'll be like, eh, yeah. he is I, what he is. I like Rick enraged. I like when Rick is ready to go, when he's really being the leader and he's like, he, he has that mission, the next point. It's not just like... Time to farm. I got stuff and things. It's like he's <laughs> yeah, out he, there he, trying mm-hmm. to do. He something. needed that though mentally, but yeah. Um, but other shows coming out. Gotham's still around. Has anybody been oh, watching Gotham? Gotham is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life. I finished out season two, and I'm not coming back for season not, three. That's my boy, I, I tried correct. to push it out through season two, and I just couldn't. I do couldn't. It. All right, where did Steve? Where did you drop off? I dropped off when. <sighs> The penguin. After Galahan came back. Yep. Galahan. <laughs> well, so I knew Galavan. they were going to do oh. that because, spoilers again for Gotham, Jim Gordon shoots in cold blood uh, Theodore Galavan, whatever it Galavan, is. Galavan, yeah. Yeah, and he's like going on to the next portion. And I hated it as a fan of Gordon because Gordon's not going to kill anyone in cold blood. Mm-hmm. And I knew they were going to bring it back in some way. And as a narrative, like – as far as TV show, that's such a cheap way to do it. Like, you're going to ruin a character, and then you're going to be like, oh, it's okay. He's not really. It's, a, it's such a dumb thing. He I jumped comes off back as a completely Freeze. different character, though, at least when I stopped watching. They yeah. bring back a lot of characters. Fish. They brought back Fish Mooney. That was terrible. Everybody that was, that's that was dead the moment I Shrek. got out. Because I didn't even watch it. I just heard Fish Mooney was coming back, and I was like, I'm not bothering and with like the And, like, Riddler, Riddler is, like, the, the Riddler now. So a lot of yeah. these villains are like fully formed, and Batman is still eleven. Mister yeah. Freeze, they did terrible by this. It kind of oh, it, it takes awesome. it, it kind of takes away the whole dynamic of to where Batman attracts these villains. Exactly. What they need yeah. to do immediately is season three needs to start with the time jump. 
they need Batman to be 18 or 20 where he's training, fighting, where he can actually start doing things because if he's still 11 coming back, what's the point? Again, all these people are fully formed villains at this point yep. now because we I, had two seasons for them to grow. I just don't see how it is that they renewed again because the ratings for that show are so bad. It's, like when I decided to stop watching it, I was just like, I can't be the only person that get, wants well, to just not, just not finish this. It's going to get three episodes into the season that's going to get canceled. Yeah, there's I no way it's going it. to make it a full 22 because it's so bad. I was interested in through season one. I'm mm-hmm. like, this is kind of the procedural cop drama, like a law and order, but, oh, this this is going to turn into... spin on it. Right. This, yeah. is, this guy is going to be the penguin one day. <laughs> but now, I'm like, oh, the Riddler's really creepy, but he works in the crime lab, yeah. but he's yeah. always doing something quirky. I actually liked that, that character a lot. Yeah. When he was just Nigma. But... Exactly. But now that he's the Riddler, it's like, what you are we s- doing? You still sticking with Legends of Tomorrow, or have you kind of given up on that one, too? Because I know you started off strong, but we were talking about it, and you're yeah, like, Yeah, hey. I'm going to be honest. It started off very strong, but they got away from it really quickly. Yeah. So, um, like, Doctor Who has a lot of... Che- like, Doctor Who is a kid's show, and they do a lot of time travel, obviously, and Legends of Tomorrow is a time travel show, but they went to weird decades. They started making weird choices. The villain wasn't compelling. Yeah. And I like that... It's a place where the minor characters in the Berlanti verse, which is what we're calling Arrow, Flash, mm-hmm. Supergirl, because he's the producer, showrunner of all those. Uh, I like that there's a place where secondary characters, even characters that have died or seriously uh, disappeared, can go and and tell stories. But I don't think that show's going to make it another season. Yeah. I, I was watching it too, and I I enjoyed it. And it might be my own fault. I didn't really keep up with it, so I kind of dropped off and yeah, I didn't finish it out. That or Arrow, but I, w- I would watch them again when, when they come on Netflix. I'll, I'll catch sure. up. Netflix, speaking of Netflix, perfect uh, timing. Luke Cage, they dropped the trailer for, obviously, at Comic-Con, so that's going to be coming out sooner than later, obviously, leading to Iron Fist and the Defenders, and I think Daredevil Season 3 was officially announced. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't heard any news about the standalone Punisher series, but, uh, but Luke Luke Cage looks pretty cool. I know you were, uh, you were complaining the other day, because I hadn't seen the trailer yet, that uh, Luke Cage was taking a car door and like yeah, he was using a ca- with it. no, not necessarily that he was using it as a shield. Yeah, which is just like silly. your skin is impenetrable. Why do you need to I'm shield telling you, he from a car door? He probably had an expensive shirt on. I'm <laughs> telling you, that is the reason. But why. then he, halfway through the scene, shirt. he just throws it away, and then he's just like hey, walking like a badass. Hey, but. do you know what a bartender's salary is these days? <laughs> <laughs> he owns <No>. the bar. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> well, it's blowing up now. So yeah, true. Yeah. Sure. So that's pretty exciting. I thought it was funny because I thought the actor who uh, would be a good Luke Cage, other than the guy that they. The guy who plays Remy Denton in House of Cards. I was like, you want to know who else could have done, pulled off this yes. role? I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, he is in it. And yeah, Brian, he's going to be the bad guy. Cage, Brian yeah. mentioned that he was probably going to be the bad guy. So yeah. uh, That's I'm, uh, September 30th is when that comes I'm, out, Luke Cage. I'm excited for Luke Cage. I hated Jessica Jones, but I'm excited for Jessica Luke Cage. Jessica Jones is great. It was good. Where can it they just... take it for a second season, though? That's the yeah. thing. Well, have they announced season two? Yes. I hope they, not. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Well, she's on the Defenders. Right, and she can't, Jessica Jones is a one-trick pony. I yeah. don't know where they're going to go from here. Exactly. The Defenders now, is going to be a TV, uh, the Netflix movie, though. It's not going to be a full series. Here is my biggest. Com- this is a spoiler. Here is my biggest complaint about Jessica Jones. Okay, it is an entire series of her not being able to get to him because he has mind control, and the one time she finally gets to him, snaps his freaking neck, <laughs> like effortlessly. It's awful. Well, it's great. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, I really liked it. I am pretty pumped for Luke Cage, uh, but. Uh, I'm not sure Westworld was a show that we were kind of chatting Ooh, about that yeah, seems pretty cool. Yeah, it's a new HBO show uh, based on a, an old movie. Um, yes. Uh, Michael Crichton, I think. Yes, was, uh, Michael. It's, yep. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, uh, the Michael Crichton? Do you know? Um, I haven't seen it, but I know um, it's about uh, like an amusement park that people go yep. to where their um, robot entertainers are like the wild west and that's kind of, and they like kind of coming come alive and start taking over and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so, so basically it's by the guy that wrote Jurassic Park and yep. it's preceded Jurassic Park. So essentially what it is there's a bunch of different lands like Disney World, like Tomorrowland. <laughs> this or, guy only writes books about yeah, parks. Exactly. <laughs> you um, had a field day with Disney. And one of, one of the lands is uh Westworld. Uh Westworld is where it's where you can go and live out your fantasy um, be a cowboy or, you know what, uh, do whatever. There are basically no rules in it. Um, and, and then obviously, like any good AI story, things go uh, real bad real quick. So we'll, de- we'll definitely be on the lookout yeah. for that. I Jonathan love- Nolan is writing it. Um, they got a stellar the cast. Dark yeah, it's a mm-hmm. really good Anthony cast. Hopkins? I mean, and yeah. I love Anthony Actually, Hopkins. If I could make him young again, I would, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Something the- that popped in my head is, um, you all know about um, Amazon Prime's whole... 
uh, pilot series that they yeah. do where you can vote on pilot. Um, Kevin Smith's actually doing a Buckaroo Banzai mm-hmm. pilot for them this fall. Kevin Smith. I don't know. It's either hit or miss, whatever he does. He's making me. a strong resurgence. Though. I just like, want to say, I love, it. I love his entire career. I just have to say, I watched Suicide Squad the other day, and I saw the trailer for Magnificent Seven, and it looks great. And all I got to say is, uh, the guy who plays Andy Dwyer, Chris Pratt, yeah. is Pratt. this generation's Paul Rudd. You cannot tell me that he's not. Just like that super nice, charming guy isn't, that isn't Paul, Paul Rudd. Rudd. Paul Rudd is still Paul here. Rudd. <laughs> you, know what I, still here. you know what I'm saying, though. Paul Rudd. It's been like ten years since like his whole thing started, and now no, I'm saying Paul like Paul Rudd is still he's still kicking. He's Ant Man. All th- I'm saying now is Chris Pratt is now taking on that role because Paul Rudd's like 52 years old. Anyway, is your head gonna explode in uh, <laughs> Infinity War? But he got he got and, really big and fought Spider Man. Anyway, any uh, any fall releases coming out for video games? Nope. We don't do video games anymore. Um, <laughs> no, uh, a couple of big ones we talked about ahead of time. Like next, well, whenever you're watching this, it's the 9th of August. Uh, no Man's Sky is coming out. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are looking forward to that or not. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for that. Um, yeah, I can't wait for that. Just uh, basically living out my Star Wars, Star Trek <laughs> dreams mm-hmm. of just flying through the galaxy and discovering. and Exactly. Yeah. Uh, did you ever play KOTOR, Knights of the Old Republic? Oh, yeah. Love one, those games. Yeah, one of my favorite Love games. Those games. It's going to take up 10 terabytes of your PS4, I feel like. <laughs> 10 <laughs> you're, billion, you're gonna billion to, You're going to have to buy a third party. <laughs> like, <laughs> like six. Now, someone guys. already, it, it, am I right in hearing that someone already basically had, they bought Whoa. they bought a, a copy for like $1,300 on eBay and they played it and they got to the end of the game already and, and spoiled it. what's funny about that is the guy Which who did it. goes back to my point that people are fanatics yeah. and crazy. Yeah. What's funny is the guy who did it didn't even do it to like push a YouTube channel or anything. He just did it and he's not releasing any of the information. Good. Oh, yeah. well, with some yeah. exceptions, but I mean like the information about the ending and all that, mm-hmm. which is cool, but it's just weird that why did you spend all that money that you could have waited a week? Um, and then going into September, uh, I don't know if any of you know about ReCore or not. Yeah, I have an Xbox One. That's on my radar. Yeah. Um, anything Inafune does, I'm in for. Huge Mega Man fan. I'm surprised. So that Mighty it... Number no. Nine was so terrible. Oh, it yeah. was, but I played it through all the way. <laughs> I'm surprised it's only marked for forty dollars, though. Yeah, that is Amazon. a little weird. Yeah. But the fact that uh, retro, the guys that left Retro Studios are the ones that are making the game, and then he's mm-hmm. helming it, gives me faith that it'll at least be fun. Um, yeah, but I'll, I'll play anything with his name speaking, on it. Speaking of like games that they released, I'm transitioning a little bit, but did you see that they re-released uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2 recently on the yeah, PlayStation Store? Way overpriced, oh, too. Exactly. Like I went to go trash. buy it, and it was like 50 bucks. It's like, are you crazy? It's yeah, f- f- ugh, 40 bucks a piece, 60 together. Way too much. But yeah. th- that game is fun as crap. That Both first of them game. are, yeah. Sure. Um, and then going through September, there's going to be an expansion of Destiny. Does anyone here play Destiny? I I bought it, but I haven't played it since. I tried it out, but it's just yeah, I just can't get into it. Yeah, I know Destiny still has a huge fan base. I've kind of fallen off too, but I hope to get back into it. Sequels coming out next year. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing I'm I'm interested in to play is like a full sequel. I don't want to buy any more expansions or, or discs. Like I just want to play the second one. Yeah, and then uh, the end of the month, it Helms to, um, one big game and one big game on my list. Final Fantasy 15 will be coming out. Ooh, I've been re- playing Final Fantasy 10 lately. And I know it's like way back, but I forgot how much I really enjoy those games. And then uh, Yokai Watch Two, which is mm-hmm. it's essentially Pokemon, just a little bit different. Um, it's got a really neat uh, fighting system. They just announced a season pass for Final Fantasy Fifteen, right? Yes. Nice. So, I mean, that goes. what I'm what we're trying to say here, since we spent thirty minutes on it, is fall is going to be a great time. Yeah. I mean, a lot of we didn't even get through like half the releases we Pumpkin wanted to get through. Pumpkin spiced. Latte. Yes. I'm, I'm insanely excited. Thank Chris. Thank you so much for being here. Thank oh, you, Chris. Chris. Thank you. Yeah. You, I want to say you are honestly awesome. Chris, you're coming back next week. Absolutely. So thanks, guys, for checking us out. Again, we're going to bust these out every other week for you, every other Wednesday. So make sure to check us out Facebook, YouTube, all the huge stuff. Uh, for everybody else here, I'm going to sign off, and uh, we will have a special Suicide Squad uh, review in depth coming up soon. So thanks so much for your time today, you guys. Hey guys, Kevin here. Thanks so much for checking out our podcast. As always, we love when you guys interact with us, so make sure to send us an email at boystonerds at gmail.com. If you have a topic you want us to talk about, if you want to be on the show, uh, make sure to check out our other shows. Kevin and Mark talk about shit, and then of course we always have our Topical Thursdays. There are going to be links below, so make sure you guys click those and check those out. And of course, 
If you want to keep up to date with most recent content, please subscribe. Uh, we will keep you entertained, I promise, and you will not miss out, and it certainly helps us out. And most importantly, make sure you share the video today. Tell your friends. If you like us, let them know. As always, take care, and thank you so much for your time.